Right, so today we're gonna go over the chest tube a little bit. And um, talking about chest tube, first and foremost, we have to discuss why we insert the chest tube in the first place, correct? So the reason why we insert the chest tube in the first place could be because the patient having a pneumothorax. This can be visualized on a chest x-ray or CT scan of the chest. And a pneumothorax simply means that there's a hole in the pleural cavity, which is the cavity where it houses the lungs. And if there's a hole, meaning a pneumothorax in the pleural cavity area of the patient, the air will continuously entering and this can cause the lung not be able to expand and collapses eventually. <clears throat> There's two kind of pneumothorax that I would like to discuss about. The first one is the simple pneumothorax and the second one is the tension pneumothorax. So eventually simple pneumothorax will lead to a tension pneumothorax. And a tension pneumothorax is a medical emergency. The patient can die or go into respiratory arrest if they're having a tension pneumothorax. So the different, the key difference between a simple and a tension pneumothorax is that with simple pneumothorax, the air entering in, but it's still able to escape. However, with tension pneumothorax, the air keep entering the pleural cavity, it's unable to escape and continuously collapses the lung and um, the patient can go down very quickly. So regarding the chest tube, obviously um, nursing role, we are not the person who will insert the chest tube. The medical doctor, provider, PA, they will be the one who trained to insert the chest tube. And um, nursing role, what we're going to do is we go into um, grab the uh, supply kit, the chest tube insertion supply kit, and also the atrium OSS supply kit. Uh, these are the two kits that we are going to utilize for this test to uh, procedure and also nursing management as well. So obviously the chest tube insertion kit, they will be handed to the medical provider and that is what they will use sterilely to insert the chest tube inside the patient. Uh, for nursing standpoint, you will grab the, uh, the Oasis atrium after you opening up the packages of the Oasis Atrium chest tube. Uh, what you're going to do is, what you're going to do firstly is that you will, um, you will see there's a uh, water packaging behind. At the moment, I don't have the water packaging, but there will be sterile water packaging behind. It's come inside as like a tube, and you removed it from here from behind. And then you insert it right here at the suction injection port, right into the suction injection port. Usually it's about two ml, and those sterile water should be right, should be up here about two ml uh, at the water seal chamber. So after you insert the water and squirt the water, sterile water inside, you go into a uh, set up your suction canister, which is right here. Uh, settings up your canister. This long tubing will be grabbed from the central, from the supply room as well. And then you will hook to your canister and then hook to the right the same injection suction port that is present on top of the atrium as well. So you connect and then um, regarding suction, you turn it on whenever the provider is ready uh, after they finishing up with insertioning the chest tube. So that part of setting up the chest tube is finished. Uh, after you're setting up the chest tube, having suction ready, you will hold on to the, uh, the tube sterilely uh, with the cap being sterile. And um, obviously the medical provider, they will do the dressing. Nursing standpoint, we don't do the dressing on the chest tube. Everything here, that will be the medical provider area. And then after the medical provider area finished, what they go to hand the, what we go to hand them is we go to hold like this and hand this tube to the medical provider doctors, to, and they will be the person who insert it and tape around this area, uh, similarly to this. Okay. All right. 
So after you are connected, take the area, uh, then it will be your turn. Uh, they will say uh, turn on the suction. So when you turn on the suction, the suction is on medium, high, does not really matter. What matters is it has to be a continuous suction because if it's not continuous and if it was in the middle, it will defeat the purpose of the chest tube and it's not um, medically correct. So after you turn on the suction to continuous, um, right here is the suction control chamber. This is where you first going to inspect. You will see right here this orange balloon will be inflated all the way. And uh, this is a leak jet tube also, it's not inflated all the way, but it should be inflated all the way, the orange balloon right here. So for example, if I turn this off, you'll see that the balloon is not inflated at all. So an inflated balloon indicates that the test tube is currently hooked up to suction, and that's uh, per order. Next, we'll see the dry suction control chamber, which is right here. The dry suction control chamber usually uh, the doctor will be the person who order uh, how much negative pressure that they would like, depends on their preference or depend on the patient's sign and symptom. Usually it's negative 20, but if they want negative 30 or 40 or other numbers, you guys can quickly change uh, right here on the right side of the chest tube. You can move up and down with this compartment on the right side right here. So it can change just the, uh, the negative pressure. You want to leave it at negative 20. So now we are good with the suction control chamber. Now we're moving now to the water shoot chamber. Uh, remember that earlier we pushed squirt fluid inside the water shield chamber. Um, when we have the water shield chamber in nursing school, we learn that it's not supposed to be bubbly continuously, correct? So when there's a continuous bubble, that means that there's an air leak. So as ICU nurses or nurses who manage chest tube, when you see that there's continuous bubbling in the water shoot chamber, it's mean that there's an air leak. If it was the ball rising up and down when the patient inhale or exhale, that's normal. But if the water seal chamber is continuously bubbling like this, that means that there's an air leak. And before we notify the doctor that this, there's an air leak, we have to check uh, where the location of the air leak is. If the location of the air leak is at the insertion side uh, or at in the patient, then we notify the doctor so that they can come and troubleshooting it. But if the air leak is at the tubing or at the atrium uh, or is it just tube itself, then we can go ahead and chain out the, uh, the oasis atrium. Okay, so how do we check for chest uh, check uh, early? So for example, if we uh, so we use clean gloves and then we hold right here at the insertion side. If the air if the air bubbling uh, if the bubbling in the water shield chamber stop, that means that the air leak is inside the patient insertion area or the patient uh, right here. Uh, I repeat, I will repeat that. We use clean club. We hold tube right here, which is at the insertion side, uh, the one that the doctor inserted. And um, the air leak, the, the air bubble stop. That means that uh, the air leak is at the insertion side. We need to notify the doctor. <clears throat> However, if you hold the tube right here and the bubble continuously, um, uh, rising up and down tightly that means that the air leak is below the insertion side so we're going to go ahead and clamp not clamp we're going to go ahead and use our two fingers to hold and see so when i hold this you guys can see that it's no longer bubbling or not as much anymore that means that the air leak is below the point where i i hold it okay so usually uh, my first thing to do is i uh, i I will clamp, I will, my first thing to do is I'm going to get not the atrium, set that atrium ready, like put the water in and have it right here next to me. And then I will just disconnect, I will just clamp this, clamp the tubing. I will just clamp the tubing, for example, like this. 
after you claim to be, then you will disconnect the two and then put it to the new atria and usually that solves the air leak. Because most of the time the air leak is inside is in the atrium itself. This tubing is very hard silicone. Um, I hardly never doubt that if there's any breakage or any hole on here. However, if there's any hole or breakage on this tubing, obviously uh, we're going to grab a whole new atrium. It will come with this tubing and then we can just go ahead and uh, ask the provider to come and remove the tape at this area and then uh, we reconnect it with the new tubing and that's how we solve the area. Okay? Um, so that's how we solve the air leak. Um, if it's below the push insertion side, usually we can troubleshoot it by ourselves as ICU nurses. But if it's at the insertion side, then we have to call the medical provider. All right, so now that we talk about water shield chamber, we're going to go ahead and talk about the collection chamber. Collection chamber, this is where the fluid collected from the patient for cavity by the lungs area where they have the pneumothorax. So um, usually uh, we, if it's more than 100 or 120 or, uh, or in a, within an hour, that's quite a lot to so usually we notify the provider or they will tell you what to notify them if it's a, seat, uh, a certain amount of fluid output per hour. Um, and then this dry red blood for the first few hours that's normal because it's freshly placed, but if it's an old chance to a couple of shifts already um, uh, and it's still bright red blood, uh, then that's concerning because the patient is currently or actively bleeding, then you guys have to notify the provider as well. Okay, so uh, whenever you mark, you can easily, uh, for fresh chest tube, we usually mark it every hour, so we check the output every hour, so we can just mark it uh, with the line and um, with an old chest tube usually here we do um, every four hours so that would be three times to shift. Okay so now we talk about different compartment of chest tube kind of how to change it. Also remember that uh, it's always below the patient chest area that's how, how and where it should be you can easily open it up like this and place it. Or if you need to go to CT scan, traveling with the patient, then just hang this on the bed, okay? All right. So also make sure that your, your tube is free of any kink. It's not, like, it's not like this. It's not like this in the bed. That's considered king, and the, there's no fluid, and this can be dangerous because it can cause tension in the rest in the patient, right? So, and that's medical emergency. We don't want that. And make sure it's not um, in a dependent loop like this or, or way and the water able to rise up. So just make sure it's like like this. Okay? And this is below the patient chest. Okay? Alright. Next we're gonna move on to the second scenario. Um, so for example this is an aggressive patient they move a lot and they confuse or um, when you guys bathe, you can turn the patient and accidentally dislodge um, the, uh, the tube at the insertion site. So if the tube at the insertion site is dislodged, please don't panic. Just use a piece of gauze and put your hand right here. As your nursing colleague should come to the supply room and grab a um, petroleum dressing. With the petroleum dressing, you're going to slap it on here and tape it three sides. So leave one side, uh, no tape, so that the air can escape, but uh, tape three sides of the dressing, petroleum dressing at the insertion side if this is lodged, okay? Stay with your patient, ask another nurse to come grab petroleum jelly dressing. So after you take it there and then ask them also to call the provider and they'll come and they insert a new chest tube area, no significant. And obviously if during the process the patient is shortness of breath um, or unable to breathe, these setting on the monitor, just put them on some oxygen, put on uh, some, some laser camera or a nerve breathing mask, uh, depending on the situation, okay? All right. What if it's dislodged um, uh, right here? If it's dislodged anywhere below the insertion side, um, typically we just 
with the area you still water inside a cup. And then put this put the area that was dislodged below the incision insertion site into the cup of that cup of sterile water. Um, I hardly never seen this dislodged anywhere, like because this is a very hard silicone too. Um, usually, sometimes if it is lost, it would be lost right here at the connection of the of the chest tube and um, and the tubing. Uh, maybe because someone didn't work it correctly, or for some other reason. Then you just put this inside the uh, the the sterile water, so it's reestablished the water shield, so that it's restored the um, negative pressure in the patient fluid cavity. And then you go into uh, get a new chest, get, and then you're going to get a new chest tube, and then uh, reconnect it. Um, that's all. All right. Also, another thing is we don't want to clamp this tube for so long. Clamping this tube more than five seconds uh, is not uh, considered safe for the patient. That means that the, their air is unable to escape, and this can cause pneumo tension, pneumothorax, right? So unless there's an order, unless the patient already restored their negative pressure in the lungs and approved by the doctor, or they put in order to clamp the tube, then we will clamp the tube, okay? So do not clamp the tube. Uh, so another important thing that I forget to mention is that um, this checking the balloon if inflated is important because if you have an old chest tube, you get a report, you need to come in the room and make sure that the balloon is inflated because per order, if they want it hooked up to suction, um, if we don't inflate the balloon, there's no suction. That's just too gravity and that's one of the rules. Too strong, not pull off, pull off the fluid or air inside the patient's fluid cavity and restore the negative pressure in the lungs, right? So, with that being said, I think uh, we cover everything. All right, so good luck and thank you for watching.